Hello, my name is Len Bear, also known as at P. Sardonicus on Twitter. And uh, today is July 19th, 2022. Uh, this is an installment of Science of Neuroweapons, in which I will summarize April 2022 letter by Dr. James Giordano published on academia.edu entitled Anomalous Health Incidents of Havana Syndrome, Implications and Lessons for Global Biosecurity and Defense. This letter was co-authored with Diane Diulis, associated with National Defense University. Dr. James Giordano is a neurologist at the Department of Neurology at Georgetown University Medical Center and a leading expert on neuroweapons. I've been following and appreciating doctors, uh, Dr. Giordano's important work for several years now. I want to remind everyone that uh, in February of 2022, he publicly acknowledged existence of medically validated cases of Havana syndrome among civilians not connected with federal government. Uh, it happened during the medical conference uh, on Havana syndrome. The conference was organized by University of Texas. Uh, the importance of this public acknowledgement that goes beyond a, beyond a hypothetical use of neuroweapons against civilians cannot be under, underestimated. Now let's go to the letter itself. It is built around six bullet points that reflect what's been officially acknowledged in the most recent intelligence report, reports by the Office of uh, Director of National Intelligence and the CIA. Uh, point number number one, approximately two dozen, two dozen individuals originally affected in Havana in, two, uh, in 2016 are regarded as verified cases of a physical injury. I'd like to pause here and provide some much needed commentary. The first U.S.-based physician to examine embassy personnel medevac from Cuba was Dr. Michael Hoffer, uh, an autoneurologist at the University of Miami. He examined 25 symptomatic individuals and 10 asymptomatic individuals, roommates of those affected. Uh, so far, the number correlates with the verified cases, um, two dozens. And what physical injury Dr. Hoff reported? It was the damage to the autolithic organs that occurred in a specific pattern and to the, to the degree that indicates injury rather than a functional uh, or inter-individual variability as determined by objective vestibular tests. The question I would like to ask, and I don't think it has been reported, reported anywhere else as far as I know, whether these objective vestibular tests were performed on other individuals with uh, anomalous health incidents, since this is now an undisputed hallmark of Havana syndrome. Does it mean that tests were not conducted in, in other individuals or they didn't reach the level indicating physical injury? Sounds to me, and this is my personal speculation, that intelligence agencies were forced to recognize, recognize these attacks because of the evidence of physical injury to the autolithic organs that couldn't be written off as coincidental because of the degree of such damage. 
The reason I'm saying this is because intelligence agencies have been reluctant to recognize the reality of Havana syndrome for a long time. Even though Dr. Hoffer's data was generated back in 2017. And only today in 2022, we have the acknowledgement of the verified cases. And another reason I'm so outspoken and critical of this is because this is no longer a strictly national security issue. It is a domestic public safety issue. Now back to the letter. The ex uh, so bullet point number two, the exact nature and probable cause of this injury remains under investigation. But exposure to some form of directed energy device remains a valid and viable possibility. Valid and viable. Bullet point number three. Several, several lines of evidence support that the multinational state of the science and technology is sufficient, is sufficiently advanced and developed to produce and operationally employ such devices. Bullet point number four. It is premature and imprudent to speculate upon the possible potential sources of such technology development and possible use. To me, that was a somewhat confusing point. Okay, I understand we might not know the sources of this technology, but the use is beyond plausibility, uh, beyond possibility. We have validated cases of physical injury using this technology as described in bullet point number one. And uh, bullet point number five, there are other individuals who have reported symptoms and presented signs of anomalous health incidents that are currently under investigation. I'd like to reiterate that we don't need to limit ourselves to symptoms only. Uh, conducting vestibular tests used by Dr. Hoffer takes one day and can be done at any properly equipped auto, auto neurologist's office. So an investigator would know the same day where the physical injury to athletic organs have been done and therefore the case has been verified. Bullet point number six. There have been numerous, literally hundreds of reports of symptoms and signs that are not consistent with the Havana anomalous health incidents and most likely are some other disorders and or reflective of a socio-psychogenic effect. Dr. Giordano expands on this last point. And he says, precise objective clinical evaluation of neurological functions, together with a number of other assessments, imaging, motor task testing, physiologic response metrics, and detailed neurophysiological evaluation, taken together with analysis of the current and prior medical, uh, medical record in history, uh, strongly supported that some physical insult had occurred. And Dr. Giordano references this statement by the materials from the medical conference I mentioned earlier and Dr. Hoffer's work. So to me, he is making a point that Havana syndrome and non-Havana syndrome cases can be differentiated with the main point of, differenti of differentiation being physical damage to autolithic organs or vestibular organs. Uh, Dr. Giordano continues, technologies such as those causing Havana syndrome pose significant risk and threat to public safety and national security. I'm very much in agreement with Dr. Giordano that this is a public safety issue and should be approached as such. Uh, that's all for Science of Neuroweapons Edition. I'll send your comments, 
uh, and um, questions to me on Twitter at P. Sardonicus. Um, until next time. <laughs>